Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Hong's classroom. I hope everyone in the states had a fantastic Thanksgiving and had some good rest. Now, unfortunately, we have a new coronavirus variant of concern, the Omicron variant. Now, now I've just made a five-minute quick digest video before this one. If you would like to learn more on that topic, please feel free to check out that video. Now, for this week, I'd like to give a quick update on two of the upcoming COVID-19 specific. Specific oral treatments, also known as COVID pills, and explain why they may not work as well in real life when compared to clinical trial results. Now, also, a viewer asked me how these two upcoming new drugs from Merck and from Pfizer would work on the Omicron variant. Now, since because I uh, teach infectious disease drugs outside of YouTube as well, and for educational purpose, I would like to offer some pharmacological. Insight on that topic at the end of this video. So, without further ado, let's get started. First, we have a drug called Monopyravir, co developed by Merck and Richback Biotherapeutics. I have previously made a video describing this drug and its efficacy in clinical trials. You're welcome to check that video after this one. The UK has already approved this drug in early November under the brand name Lagethrio. Now, in brief, this drug works by tricking the virus into introducing errors in their viral RNA during replication and stopping its viral cycle. Back in October, the company released preliminary clinical trial data that showed this drug, when given within five days of symptom onset, the drug can reduce hospitalization by 50%, and no one who took the drug during the trial died of COVID. The US FDA expert panel is going to discuss its EUA application on Monday, November 30th. But just on this past Friday, November 26, the company updated the efficacy data on its news website. Instead of a previously reported 50% reduction in hospitalization, the drug is now only a 30% reduction in hospitalization. And here is the breakdown of the updated trial result. Now, in this study population, monopyravir reduced the risk of hospitalization or death from 9.7% in the placebo group to 6.8% in the treatment group, and for an absolute reduction of risk of 3% and a relative risk reduction of 30%. Nine deaths were reported in the placebo group and one in the treatment group. The main safety concern of this drug is its potential danger to pregnant women and developing fetuses. Now, because of the way this drug introduces error in the genome replication process, this is one of the key topics the FDA expert panel will discuss on Monday. The second upcoming COVID oral drug is from Pfizer. Its trade name is Paxlovid. It is a combination of an experimental drug, codenamed PF-0732133, and an approved drug, Ritonavir. The Paxlovid is very different than the monopyravir. Instead of making errors in the viral RNA, it stops viral enzyme called 3CL protease. It prevents the virus from cutting the long chain of protein into parts of a smaller protein needed to perform the RNA replication process. So this drug works one step ahead of monopyravir in the viral cycle. Now remember, Paxlovid also has another component or another drug in it. It is called Ritonavir. Now this drug is used to slow down the breakdown of the PF-0732133 drug so that the drug can stay active in the body for a longer period of time. Now, according to the only currently available data source from Pfizer's news website, this drug demonstrated an overall of 89% reduction in risk of COVID-19 related hospitalization or death. And when the drug is given within three days of symptom onset, it actually has a higher relative risk reduction, close to 91.8%. When the drug is given within five days of symptom onset, we see a slight reduction in the relative risk reduction efficacy, about 85%. In both regimens, we do not see any death in the treatment groups. 
because this drug worked before the viral RNA replication process, it did not show any evidence of mutagenic DNA interactions. Now, as a pharmacologist, I would like to point out three very important things we need to be aware about monopiravir and as well as Paxlovid. And let's look at it. Now, we have to pay attention to a very key important message here. Both drugs indicated to work between three to five days of COVID symptom onset. And after this golden period, the virus would have already replicated too much and the drug would not be as effective. So the timing of starting the drug is crucial here. It really depends on rapid and reliable COVID testing results. And as far as I know, rapid antigen tests are not very sensitive. And at the same time, PCR test results can also be delayed. So the real world usage of both COVID drugs may not be as high as what they have observed in clinical trials. Point number two, this is specific for Paxlovid. Now, this drug contains a second drug called Ritonavir. It is what we call a drug metabolizing enzyme CYP3A4 inhibitor. Now, basically, more than 50% of currently all marketed drugs we take these days are metabolized by this enzyme 3A4. So if a patient were on Paxlovid, there would be significant drug interactions, such as drugs for lowering cholesterol, symphostatin, steroid prednisone, antibiotics such as erythromycin, and many, many more. So Paxlovid could increase the level of these common drugs and increase the risk of adverse events when the patients are on the these other commonly used drugs and taking the Paxlovid together. And lastly, to answer my viewers' question, let me offer some pharmacological insight on these two drugs against the Omicron variant. Now, even though the Omicron variant has about 50 mutations, most of the mutations are still on the spike protein, and both COVID pills works on uh, a very conservative viral cycle process. In fact, a small mutation in the viral process in terms of replicating their RNA could disrupt their uh, cycle and therefore killing the virus. So these two drugs are very likely to actually still retain their pharmacological activity against the Omicron variant. But again, now this is a statement based on my knowledge of pharmacology. It would be best to to see some more data in the near future. The fact is that these oral drugs for COVID can be very beneficial in terms of keeping people from going into hospitals, but taking an extra drug even for a very short period of time can lead to many drug interactions and unwanted side effects. Now, even though the media sometimes portrayed these drugs as a potential game changer, they are not risk-free. So that is all for this week. And I know I have many video requests. That I've been reading all your comments. Thank you very much. I will try to get to them as much as possible and as quick as possible. And uh, meanwhile, please, again, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.